Our country and our democratic allies are facing a great threat. The political, cultural and economic values upon which our society is based are under attack by those countries that see us as their deadly enemies. They refuse any confrontation, any reasonable way to come to terms. And so, in the name of peace, we must get ready to go to war. slow you down. Don't worry about the heat and the burning fires. Welcome, Mr. President. Or should I call you Ricky Rocker? What place is this? These are the gates of hell. Sit down, we have to talk. About what? About your life. You've had a remarkable life. Three different lives, actually. All very successful. I did my best. Some would say that you did your worst. I reached all my goals. Indeed you did. Let's start from the very beginning. You were an orphan. Yes, nobody knew who my parents were. We do. They have been our guests for some time. Believe me, you didn't miss much. Anyway, I was adopted by a decent couple who took decent care of me. And then they both died timely as soon as you turned 18, leaving you a decent sum of money. It was a car crash. Somebody messed with the brakes. That was never proved. Cars are dangerous. Whatever. So you were on your own, with a little capital for a start. I wanted more, and there aren't so many ways for a teenager to become rich. I wasn't good at sports, and anyway I wanted to be the only one in the limelight. Not to mention all the bimbos backstage. And so I chose music, and I invested my little capital in the best music producers and look consultants. And I became Ricky Rocker. The rock star of the millennium. Is a job of my life. It's so simple to play the rebel while the whole world kisses your ass. I was cool, I was sexy, I didn't give a damn about anything, especially those dumb fuckers who cried for my songs. I just gave them what they wanted. Love and lust, drugs and dreams, youth and freedom everlasting. All those silly lies that young suckers always fall for. And so you became a millionaire in your twenties. You could have stuck with a job, but then you choose to die. It was the best move for business. Dead rock stars make more money than the living ones. And by then I was bored with music. I just had to die in the right way. I found a guy who looked just like me, got him in one of my villas and overdosed him. And then I burned everything just to be sure. You did a great job. Your friends were so heartbroken that some of them killed themselves because they couldn't live without you. We gave them a very warm welcome down here. Dumb fuckers, as I said. The only thing that I cared about that period of my life was the money which kept coming in in a separate fund through my lawyers even after my official death. There's nothing lawyers can't arrange if you pay them enough. We know, we have plenty of them down here, and we make them pay. I had other plans by then. I wanted to make some real serious money. Your millions weren't enough? Billions are better than millions, and you don't make billions with music, not as quickly as you wanted. So you changed identity? No, actually. The second life I was a phantom. I shed any identity. I became a financial speculator with no face, no name, no country, no moral responsibilities. I just put my millions at work to turn them into billions. Investments can have good effects also. You could have created jobs, good products and services, make society a better place. Not the kind of investments that I did. I invested in oil, weapons, polluting chemicals, OGMs. That's where the real money was. I bought good ethical companies and broke them. I raised thousands of decent jobs, and then I hired the very same people to work twice as much at half the pay they used to get. That's good management. We do something like that all the time down here also. I learned how to ride the waves of the markets, how to make them swell and collapse at my command. I was the secret engine at the heart of any speculation. I made all the money I wanted and more. I was by far the richest man in the world, even if nobody knew it. But at that point, money wasn't my main concern. I had gained international influence, media power, top political connections. I was putting the basis for my next life. Your political career. All those jobless people that I created through my financial speculations, all the dysfunctional families influenced by the media I controlled, all those desperate people would become my puppets and my electors. As a rock star I learned manipulation 101. 
but as a politician, I took a master class. Time for a new identity. I had all the time I needed for that. I created a spotless political profile for myself. And now it was time to be born again, as Richard Goodfellow, a man rich of money and ideals, and ready to spend them both freely. I donated huge amounts of money to the same organizations that I secretly controlled through my investment funds, and so I managed to make further money from my own donations. Meanwhile I was earning something more than money. Poor people loved me. They saw me as their protector, their paladin. They would have done everything for me. And so you were elected as president. With a record number of votes, I had my army of puppets that would do anything for me, and I knew how to use them. I was aware that the market by then was exhausted. Too many crises, junk bonds, futures. We had squeezed the orange until there was no more juice left. Too many people unemployed and desperate. Too risky to let their discontent grow without venting it. It was necessary to get rid of them, and I had a solution. A war, of course. Wars create good business, and in the aftermath there are always great opportunities for shrewd investors. The biggest the war, the biggest the gain afterward. So I was going to succeed where so many other politicians failed, and start the Third World War. It was high time for that. Too many countries were looking for it. Too many religions craved for their doomsday. Too many people needed a vent for all the hate, rage and despair that they had accumulated. And so you gave them all what they wanted. That's what I've always done. When the ship moved, they always follow the first in the line. That's my job. I did it as a rock star, and then as a financial speculator, and finally as a politician. That's what good leaders are supposed to do. Exploiting the will of people, guiding them towards whatever ends the leader chooses for them. Yes, I was leading them exactly where I wanted. But then, there was this crazy idiot that shot me. One of my bodyguards, can you believe that? Of course, we sent him to kill you. It was time for you to finally go where you belonged. Well, I guess he considered me a highly qualified sinner. For which of my various sins are you going to punish me? None of them. We didn't bring you to hell just to torture you for your sins. Believe me, there are already plenty of people for that. Too many sinners actually, and not enough devils to deal with them. This is why we couldn't waste a talent such as yours. You make it sound as if you are offering me a job. Exactly. Here in hell, we need mean, manipulative maniacs like you, who really know how to squeeze out anything good people have inside of them, until only pain, regret and despair are left. That's what we do down here, and you are perfectly qualified. It's a great honor, for all the cruelty and wickedness of your race, very few humans have ever been offered to join demonkind. I guess it's always better than being one of the damned. Believe me, you won't miss heaven. It's pretty boring up there. All they do is cloud surfing, stargazing, and listening to that tedious music of the spheres. Down here we are having all the fun. Sex, drugs, and rock and roll. Any perversion ever dreamed. All the greatest sinners. All the hottest rock stars. We burn them to keep them that way. Seems interesting. Freda, Vampa, please lead our friend to his hole. Follow them, Richard. And trust me, you're gonna have a hell of a good time down here. Ha 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 